I'm ready. Oh my goodness. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Guess what? We are now in season two of Tattoos and Toddlers, and I am so excited to get my new guests on this year. You know, I this year is 2024. It's Happy New Year. We are ready to get going into season two, and I'm so excited. So if you don't know me already, I'm Jen with Weirdo Weddings Photography. I capture weddings. I make conceptual work, but I've also started speaking and podcasting, and it's been so much fun to meet new people and talk to people of all different walks of life, whether you have tattoos or toddlers and today we're going to have this a very fun conversation with with penny here and i have a really great idea of where we're going to go in the conversation but i want you to stay tuned for the ride penny introduce yourself <laughs> thank you so much for having me here my name is penny fraser i'm a portrait photographer in south florida i have a studio in lauderdale by the sea penny fraser photography and i am really excited to be here with everyone today thank you well welcome in to the tattoos and toddlers podcast i love the fact that okay we met at promoting passion right one of our most favorite conventions that helps us look at life differently and approach art differently and and really just finding our unique voices. So as we were talking about this episode, and this is something I can relate to because I, if you didn't already know, I am over 40. <laughs> and so I am creeping up to 50. But what I love about what our topic was going to be about today is kind of like, it sounds like it's a celebration of, you know, a certain age of people, like celebrating who you are over 40. So can we go into a little bit about your passion project for the 40 over 40? Yes, thank you so much. And I'm so glad we met at that convention. Yeah. It was really great. The 40 over 40 is my passion project to help, um, promote and give visibility to women over 40, kind of break down some of those stereotypes and show the community that women over 40 are beautiful, relevant, worthy, and they have a story to tell to uplift and inspire others in the community, whether they're under 40 or in that demographic. You know, it's important to um, gather these stories and highlight these women's uh, accomplishments and kind of put it out there. So, um, so this project, it includes a magazine. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, show you. Oh, this. she's going to show us y'all. If you are not watching this on YouTube, you better pull up your YouTube. <laughs> Look at that cover. That is an amazing tone of color and the model on front. OMG. Look at her hair. She, she is beautiful. She has gorgeous silver hair and she is a local um, artist in the community. Mm -hmm. She has a very uplifting story and then um, all the other women are in here as well. Each photo shoot is different. Yeah. I interview each person. And as you can see, each one has a message for other women in the community to uplift and inspire them. The exhibit includes their image along mm -hmm. with an interview that I do. Um, capturing some of uh, their proudest moments, their yeah. biggest challenges after 40 and things like that. Well, I think that's great because, you know, believe it or not, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I thought 40 was old. Yes. <laughs> and I, 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 it freaked me out when I, even a friend of mine was turning 30 and I was like, oh my God, 30. Now, mind you, I was only 18 or 19 at the time. I was like, I just couldn't see myself like, oh my God, what am I going to be at 30? Okay. So now I'm 47. And I'm like, what am I going to be at 50? I have no idea. But I love the project because it's a way to celebrate who you are and when you are, like when you are in your life. And depending on who you are, you've had different lives than all your other 40 year old plus friends. And some of us have gone through things throughout our lifetime. Some of us are still going through things and we're starting new things. Um, I am so fortunate, and I'm sure maybe you can relate to this too, that we have people in our lives that are ahead of us, you know, by age that we learn from. I don't know. Do you have people in your life that maybe inspired this project? Like, or is it yourself that inspired this project? Uh, both, actually. This Dig into that. Tell me about it. 
So this project really came out of the lockdown in 2020. Mm -hmm. I was uh, working from home. I'm an attorney and I was working from home and um, I don't have, I didn't have a husband or I don't have children. So during the lockdown, I was very isolated and alone. And at one point, since I've been doing photography for many years, I set up my camera and I started doing selfie Sundays where I would get oh. all glammed up. I would have a trigger, my camera on a timer, and I'd start taking myself portraits. And immediately I felt a boost of confidence. I felt beautiful. And it just completely changed my outlook during that time. So I made a promise that I would be, once the lockdown's over, I would like to offer that experience to other women. And kind of during the lockdown at the same time, I also hit menopause. So oh my God. all the changes that happened since 40, I kind of, you know, felt a real change during that time. And yeah. I thought, okay, this is not only is a lockdown a defining moment in my life, but also hitting this milestone is. So then I decided to do the 40 over 40 bombshell series yeah. where I photograph 40 women and get their stories. What were their defining moments? What have, you know, what have they done since 40, their accomplishments, their challenges their proudest moments and um that really started the series for me so i've already had two exhibits it mm -hmm. takes me about a year to photograph everyone and create the magazine and then the following year i have the event so uh, i'm working on my third series event for this september isn't that amazing oh, hey, no, I'm so yes, that is so exciting and, and I'm interviewing uh, ladies for the event for next year. So I'm doing the interviews and photo shoots for the next series right now. That's great. And, you know, I, uh, the thing I love about these kinds of projects, too, is that everybody feels a sense of, in, you know, being included. And it's like, I know it's an age range of people, but it's like there's a there's a huge amount of us that never knew how to use our voices up until 40, maybe. Right. Yes. Like there's so many of us that we had some life shifts happen. Yes. During the pandemic, but, and for me, I started a new photo brand myself. I was like, what am I doing? You know, starting this new thing. Like it makes zero sense, but it makes all the sense in the world when it leads you right into something you're already passionate about. And especially if I like hearing the backstory of why this started, because there's a lot of amazing ideas that came out of that lockdown and that, that time where we had to be shut in for amount, an amount of time. Um, we were able to slow down our lives just a little bit in a right. different way. Like not everybody's lives looked a little different. Some either sped up or slowed down. I kind of had to slow down because my business was photography. Um, my husband sped up because he was, you know, he's have, he was in the middle of, you know, technology crisis and all this other stuff that was happening in the world, um, trying to keep their businesses alive. Right. Um, so I love that we have all these great ideas and projects that come out of that pain. And I, I like to call it pain because it was a, a, a season of grief and loss for so many of us that, um, in or isolation, right. Um, I felt isolated from my, fr I never realized how much of a social person I was until I was made and forced to stay home. Yes. Um, and I was acknowledging that, like how many, how many of us have stopped to acknowledge yeah. how we work, how our personality is. And I felt like that was a great opportunity to get to know our personalities. Now in your project, do you, do you have like a certain amount of time that y'all, do you have like a big questionnaire for everybody that's involved? Do you have like this giant interview that you do with them? Is it, you know, do you have to really get to know the heart of what they're doing and why they're doing it when you're doing these projects? Yes. In the beginning, I interview each person because I want to make sure I have a lot of diversity yeah. And then at the end, we do the magazine interview. So mm. I've heard so many inspiring stories. You know, this is, I changed careers, you know, to do this full time. And it's only me. So I, you know, I do everything with the magazine. I do everything with the photo shoot, with the yeah. curation of the exhibit. And some days it is overwhelming, but then I start actually reading 
their stories. And, it and you're just, like, yes, inspiration. <laughs> I got to keep going because the world needs to hear this. I've heard so many inspiring stories, women that overcame uh, breast cancer that uh, went back, that went to law school after 40 and then started their own practice. Um, women that have traveled all over, women that changed careers that, you know, went through all sorts of things. And it's just so inspiring. So I it's agree. really, I agree with you. Like when we are working in our zone of genius, we'll call it that zone of genius. The days can get hard and long and you sometimes don't see the big picture. Even if you had the opportunity to see the big picture, it's like, but like you're saying every little bit like that, every little word that somebody has said or spoken keeps you going. And I love that because I think we all need to remember that it's not just about us having our voice. It's about helping others find their voices too. And I think it's awesome. It's yes, yes, it's definitely, you know, from my heart to help um, share their stories. It's all about these amazing ladies and also uplifting people in the community. My hope is even the younger generation, when yeah. they go to the exhibit, they can see, you know, life doesn't end at 40. It just begins. And these are the testaments to that, all the stories. <laughs> Yeah, I I want to I want to commend you for that too because again, how do we know something if it's not represented to us? Like how would I have known to pursue photography if it had if had it not been presented to presented to me? How would I know somebody else's walk of life if I didn't have a conversation or see a gallery exhibit of them telling their story? That's why it's powerful to step up and use your voice no matter what what you're yeah. going through right now. And um, just to speak to all the artists out there that are just sitting there waiting on that project to happen, but you're like, no, I have to get up every day and you do the work regardless yeah. of if anybody sees it, if anybody yeah. hears it, you still have to get up and do, I'll call it the heart work because I always, I always like, I've seen that before somewhere, but I always thought to myself, man, heart work makes sense because we're doing this from the heart yeah. and it's a lot of work. Yeah, But it's also internally, like our heart and passion is intertwined with our emotions and our passions and, and purpose. So it's heart work all around. We're doing heart work, artwork. <laughs> very rewarding. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So as we start thinking about the future this year, you said you have some, some people you've got lined up already. Do you, do you tend to choose the 40, is there a certain range of time you start like looking in the fall? Do you do a call out? Do you have a waiting list? Does it start to get overwhelming with how many people are interested? There are a lot of people interested. So I just launched the interviews. So I have, Mm. you know, people signing up and I'm calling them and getting their stories and I'll probably continue that for the next few months. And then I think by then I'll have my 40 you know, select it. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. And I love that. Um, here's what, and this is my personal thought. I love that each one of them are different. They're going to be styled different. They look different. I even like that you showed me one, her, her portrait was sideways. I was like, that's yeah. great. <laughs> I love having the, yeah. the ability to see something that gives every single person their own individuality on those pages. Yeah. I love that. Because yeah. I, you know, I myself as an artist, I love seeing something that's representative of, of that person, no matter right. what. My, do, you, do you find that like challenging or easy when it comes to to talking with everybody? It's easy because I get their uh, ideas, their aesthetic, and yeah. some people don't really know. So I ask certain questions to kind of come up with something. So each session is personalized and I have a large um, studio wardrobe. So some people like the real glam, some like, you know, more bohemian style. So I have something for everybody. And then I have different sets and sometimes Mm, for example, even going to uh, the beach. So, you know, even in on location type photo shoot. So I want to make sure it's not cookie cutter because everybody's individual. Yeah. And that's 
easier to um, create images that reflect them in their personality. So yeah, and I think uh, I'm sure this is a no brainer, but I'm sure the confidence in like, I have you ever had somebody somebody just kind of show up like not even confident to do it and they end up walking out more confident because I, I see a lot of studios do a lot of fun sessions, but a lot of the time people are fighting their fears to even be in front of the camera. Do you find that to happen? Or because of the special uniqueness of the project, do you find everybody like super excited? Like, I got to do this. It's a range. Some people are like, I really want to do it, but I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. I've never done this before. So I walk them through the whole photo shoot. I listen to them. I take my time with them. So at the end, they're on cloud nine. They feel like a model for a day. <laughs> they're like, I don't know why I was so nervous. But, um, we have fun. And then others, you know, they're ready to go. So it all depends on the certain, certain person. But um, I make sure they enjoy the experience because it's all about them. It's about celebrating them. And that's what I want their spirit to come through in the images. I want them to feel good and have that show. And it's important because as photographers, we know the difference between if somebody ain't feeling it to they yeah. start exuding confidence. And we, a lot of us that have done photography for a long time and worked with other people, we know that sometimes it could take you an hour to actually warm up. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's one of those things where like some of my clients in the past, I'm like, oh, well now we're to the end of our hour session and now we're getting the money shots. <laughs> and well, by money shots, I mean the ones yeah. that give you that feeling of this is the one, or in your case, do you have, do you end up with like, you know, several outfit changes? Do you have different personas they work with, different styles they work with in one session, or you just kind of stick with one running theme for each person? They, they get two to three looks. So it could nice. be glamour, beauty, or um, boudoir. So it's completely up to them. And if they want to add on like headshots, branding, or something outside of those um, types of photography. They can do it during their session. The first part, they will be trying on different clothes. And this is where the icebreaker is. Yeah. They, they, they aren't just walking in and, you know, posing or, you know, having me put lights everywhere. So they, they try on different outfits. We find the best two to three looks they really love and yeah. then we'll start the photo shoot. And I show them the back of the camera and that really boosts their confidence and their comfort level because they can see that they look beautiful and they really enjoy it. So um, I think that first part trying on outfits really, everybody likes to dress up. So it's- Oh fun. yeah. And especially <laughs> if it's something that's not even in your closet, like some people like going outside of their own closet or they bring their own stuff kind of a thing, right? Bring, so- yeah. Yeah, there's something about doing a little bit of both and just feeling feeling yourself, I guess, feeling the way you move with your body, the way you feel in something. And and I I love that when people go outside of their boxes on these kinds of photo shoots too, you never know how they're going to react to an outfit they don't even own. <laughs> it's like, you never know. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my so, gosh. So I have so many outfits here and I also have different fabrics so I could even make an outfit. And then I have like the fantasy looks, um, yeah. angel wings, yeah. mermaid tails, and I have different sets. I just got a shower set. I have a cloth foot bathtub. I have seamless paper for the minimalist look. That's wonderful. Have. And then I have backgrounds like this. Oh, I love your background, by the way. Those of y'all who are on this podcast only listening, you've got to hop on YouTube and look at her background like right now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I would so, probably wear that as a dress. You know, I was just, I opened this conversation. I'm looking for a dress and it's just bothering me that I can't find something yet that's in my time range. And I was like, I would wear that outfit right there behind you. Um, <laughs> I would just wear that backdrop. <laughs> I know it's so pretty, right? It's so pretty. And it's got these bright yellows and a bright bluish and purple tones. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. I love it. Um, so what's, what's the next thing that is coming up for you that we, we were talking about the tattoo thing earlier and 
and you said you didn't have any, right? But when you have this other project that you're thinking about working on, can we talk about your fascination with tattoos and where this, this idea is going? Yes, thank you so much. Um, well, I don't have tattoos. I love tattoos. And what I love most about them is it's art, which I'm an artist and I appreciate yeah. art. But also there's a story. I love narrative photography. That's why I love the 40 over 40 bombshell series because there's a story behind the photo. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do for the tattoo series. So right now I'm interviewing, there's a wait list. Yeah. And what I'm doing is um, people are applying, I'm interviewing, I'm getting uh, photos of their tattoos. And during the interview, I find out uh, when did they get their first tattoo? What is a tattoo? What does it symbolize? What was going on? You know, what is about the other tattoos? And I found so many fascinating stories, even though I just started this, you know, a lot of um, memorial type tattoos. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are getting it for certain milestones in their life or certain things. So I love gathering those stories. It's so inspiring and it's so interesting. And I'm going to be photographing uh, 20 people mm. and I'm going to highlight their tattoos. So it may be a fine art nude project, not showing, you know, anything private, but that way we can showcase the tattoos and then have their stories. And then we're, I'm going to create a coffee table book and I'm reaching out to a few venues for book signing events. So the people in the coffee table book will be able to go to these events and sign the book and, you know, tell the community a little bit about their story. So I'm Right now I'm looking for, you know, stories that are moving, that are inspiring, that are unusual. And um, I'm yeah, because really 20 people is a, it's a smaller number. It's a smaller number to narrow it down to. <laughs> I know. So far I got more than 20 ap applications, but I'm still going through because I want to have diversity you know yeah so. you almost you almost have to kind of go through the list and see what fits for the at least this first project this is probably yeah. another ongoing opportunity for you because how many people of the world have tattoos just you know big small I, um I, even just starting this podcast I mean I'm called tattoos and toddlers but yeah. for those that have tattoos that are willing to share their story it's very fascinating to me the reasons why people get them or they made a mistake when they got them or, you know, stuff like that. And it's really fun to just kind of go through all the things when you meet people. And right. so I'm so glad you're doing that project too, because I can relate to both of those, yes. <laughs> you know, the over 40 and tattoo stories. I love that. And you know, a lot of things that I find with tattoo, you know, folks is that a lot of people are not ashamed or afraid to show all of their tattoos and have everything visible and for me maybe I'll apply for the future but for me like I it just was more comfortable to have them all hidden and I never even saw them for myself until the I think it was the fall of 22 when I decided to get a forearm tattoo oh wow and I was like I this is a big step for me I'm you know 40 something near years old I'm getting my first visible tattoo that people can actually see on my arm. And what and, is it? Oh, it's a big art piece. Can we Perfect. see? Well, it's, it's really hard to do it here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, it's really I really hard love to do it here. It. So you have an eyeball. It's an, it's planted in a pot with bursting roots from it. And, you know, there's a lot of symbolism that goes into mine. But, and I've, I've already mentioned my tattoo before, but the, the point was, is like, when you're talking to people, I would be curious to know those who've been bashful about hiding them or showing them off. Like I was bashful for a really long time, even though I loved my one on the, my back, but I still couldn't see it. Like I couldn't see any of my tattoos. I'd have to contort into the mirror to see them. Yeah. But now I have, I went to Vegas this last fall mm -hmm. and I have a spaceship. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's so, so 
And the fun story about this little tiny tattoo is there's a little place in Vegas where you can go get $10 tattoos. And a friend of mine, a wedding pro friend of mine, I'd never met her in person. We show up at the same convention and she says, Hey, I found this trend on TikTok." And I was like, you're kidding me. I said, now we have to go do it. Right. Like, (laughs) well, it's not even a trend. It's just an infomercial. It's an infomercial. Go get a tattoo at this place for $10 and they have rotating art. And you just go get your little ten dollar tattoo. Now, the fun thing about this, and maybe I will eventually apply to be the uh, on this right, is yeah. the fun thing about it is you have you have limited places where you can stick it. And I was like, well, oh. guess I'm going to have to do the other forearm because I don't want to disturb <laughs> this forearm. <laughs> oh Thanks for sharing. That's so cool. Oh yeah, I mean that's just that's two of my newest that are visible. And my next question to you before we have to round out our conversation is: yeah. Have you been since you don't have any tattoos? Are are you aware of the tattooing process? Have you been in a parlor before? Um, I haven't. I haven't. You know, had a tattoo, and I haven't watched anybody get a tattoo other than you know on TV. But <laughs> oh my so. gosh, highly recommend you go into some time and call up some people and say who's going to get their next tattoo. It would be amazing to see your perspective on what the actual process is because I am betting you could make more art out of the process, not just the final product. You know, that is a very good point. Thank you. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna- and yeah. yeah, I mean, for those of us who've been under the needle, we know we know the dedication and time it, t- it takes for the artist, but also us to sit there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it looks painful. Is it painful? Depends. No, it depends. Part. It really depends on where you get it. And then all my tattoo friends will will chime in on this, but there are more painful areas than others. And I definitely found out the forearm is the the least painful I've ever had. But really, it just starts feeling like a sunburn, like a really bad sunburn at some point. You know, your skin gets a little warm. It's a little pokey, but no, it's not terrible. Not terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm what gonna- do you think, everyone? Should we talk her into getting a $10 tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, as we round out our conversation, thank you so much, Penny, for coming on today. It has been so much fun to talk about your art projects and the things and the the things behind the projects. And as we know, we all have a story to tell. So what can we leave everybody with today as far as, you know, an inspiration to, you know, whether they're 40 over 40 project or the tattoo project or anything that we're involved in telling stories, what would we leave somebody with today? Well, I would leave them with um, be yourself. That's the best you can be. Authenticity, self-love, self-worth. Just love yourself, be yourself. And, you know, the world will love you too. (laughs) No, I love that because it's a great reminder of how we can all, we all have the ability to approach life this way. And it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do is truly try to be yourself because it's so easy to want to blend in. Ask yeah. me how I know, but it's like, it's so easy to want to blend in, but mind you, the world, like you said earlier, the world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for your voice. So thank you again for joining me today on tattoos and toddlers, Penny. It's a pleasure to see you. And until the next episode, y'all. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Love being on here. Thank you so much fun. Bye.